Welcome back to State of the Union. The House Committee investigating the January 6th attacks is gearing up for more hearings after the bombshell testimony this week. And now the two Republican members of the committee are urging the Biden Justice Department to act, including my next guest. Here with me now is a member of the January 6th committee, Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger of Illinois. Congressman, I want to get your reaction to what you just heard from the South Dakota governor, Christy Nome, particularly on January 6th, talking about uh, the fact that she didn't think specifically that the former president had any blame. She said everybody has blame, but she also put into question the credibility of Cassidy Hutchinson. Your response? Yeah, I mean, this, uh, I'm blown away. This is not, you know, I served with Christy Nome in the House, and it's like invasion of the body sna snatchers. This is not the Christy Nome I served with. Christy Nome I served with you know, was conservative, dedicated to truth. Uh, I, and I, at the time, would have thought would have put her country above her political career at any moment. It is clear, look, Dana, it is clear she is running for president or vice president. She's scared to death of the base. And for her to, to call into question, you know, a 26-year-old patriot who stood in front of the committee alone and told the truth, uh, and then to, to, to avoid saying that Donald Trump bore even an ounce of responsibility for January 6th. I, 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 I get amazed still every day uh, by what some of my colleagues do. This is one of the biggest ones. She used to be something very different. Um, there are, I don't need to tell you, only two Republicans on this committee. You're one of them. The other is Vice Chair Liz Cheney. She's facing a very tough re-election fight in Wyoming. Wyoming. She faced off with her opponents in a debate this week. Take a listen. Our republic is not in danger because of President Donald J. Trump. We have serious questions about the 2020 election. When I talked to Mike Lindell, he did say that there was a small, small portion of uh, voter fraud in this state, but that is alarming anyway. There is fraud happening, and we know it. I will never violate my oath of office, and if you're looking for somebody who will, then you need to vote for somebody else on this stage. You had a colorful reaction to that debate using a term that I think my 11-year-old son would like. You said her opponents are, quote, a bunch of armpit farters. But realistically, one of them could very well win in November. Yeah, I mean, look, it's, it's, okay, how do I put it this way? So Liz Cheney, you can disagree with her position on whatever, but she stood in front of her constituents and she said, look, here's where I'm at on these issues, these core democracy issues. Now you can make a decision whether or not to vote for me. Frankly, that's what politics should be. That's what every election should be. You see her opponents spreading conspiracy. You know, her main opponent was a big supporter of Liz Cheney until she found out that maybe she could run against Liz Cheney. And so they are lying to their constituents. I guess she hasn't really said whether the election was stolen or not, but likes to, to play games. This has turned into, and this is where, I mean, I honestly think the political system is failing America. And, and, and Americans have got to wake up and demand far better because we, we have a primary system where somebody like Liz Cheney, a very professional focused person, regardless of what you think of her politics, I tend to agree with her politics, of course, you know, can be up against just lies and conspiracy and five to 10% of the country or of that district of Wyoming will actually show up and vote in a primary and, and make a decision. We just had a uh, Mary Miller that beat uh, Rodney Davis here in Illinois, a 700,000 person district, and it was only a few tens of thousands of people that voted in that. Something's gotta change. Um, look, Liz, God bless her, she is making a stand. I think she can win, but I hope this serves as a lesson to every American. Like, let's fix this system because the primary system is failing you. Congressman, let's turn to the explosive testimony this week from former Trump White House aide Cassidy Hutchinson. Here's what she said. Then Deputy Chief of Staff Tony Ornato told her happened inside the presidential car on January 6th. The president said something to the effect of, I'm the effing president. Take me up to the Capitol now. The president reached up towards the front of the vehicle to grab at the steering wheel. Mr. Engel grabbed his arm, said, sir, you need to take your hand off the steering wheel. We're going back to the West Wing. Mr. Trump then used his free hand to lunge towards Bobby Angle. So this is the part that Governor Nome was referring to, and some Secret Service sources are disputing the account. 
Others say, though, it tracks with what they heard. So the question is, um, Trump allies are trying to use this to discredit all of her testimony. Why did the committee put this out there, ask her about this, that she heard secondhand without first obtaining corroborating evidence? Well, I'm not going to say what we do or don't have in terms of corroboration, um, but let me say this. Uh, what she said is this is what she heard. At no point did she say she was in the beast with the president and saw this right. happen. Now, you guys have done a good job of reporting Secret Service uh, uh, sources saying they heard the same story. What you're seeing now, and this is typical for Trump world, that nobody has argued, nobody has argued that the president didn't want to go to the Capitol. Nobody has argued that he didn't know there were guns. Um, they're trying to argue, did he really grab for the beast? And that's where Tony Ornato will have to come in and tell us more about his position on that. Will he do that? Uh, well, we'll there, there's information I can't say yet, but uh, we certainly would say that Cassidy Hutchinson has testified under oath. We find her credible. And anybody that wants to cast disparagements on that, that, that was firsthand present, should come and also testify under oath. And not through anonymous sources, quote unquote, and not potentially being an anonymous source. Congressman, since Cassidy Hutchinson's testimony, have new witnesses come forward to want to speak up? Yes. Um, I, I, again, I don't want to get into who or any of those details, but it, and it's not even just Cassidy. By the way, she's she's been inspiring for a lot of people. Um, it's, it, this happens every day. Every day we get new people that come forward and say, hey, I didn't think maybe this piece of a story that I knew was important, but now that you guys are, t like, I do see this plays in here. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, uh, she is going to go down in history as, I mean, people can forget the names of every one of us on the committee. They will not forget her name. And by the way, she doesn't want that. She doesn't want to be out in the public spotlight, but she has a commitment to truth that somebody like Christy Nome, for instance, and most people in our party, would actually benefit to take just a 10% ounce. Real quick, because we're out of time. Will we hear from witnesses that you did not know about with stories you did not hear because of the hearing so far? Yes, yes. There will be, there is, there will be way more information and uh, stay tuned.